From the very beginning of this channel, one of our most frequent theories is that the Oracle fulfills the purpose of perpetuating the Matrix cycle. The Oracle uses manipulation tactics to further that purpose. But what if we had her all wrong and the Oracle is the true savior of the Matrix? Welcome to Matrix Explained. Welcome to the desert of the real. After so many videos explaining the Oracle's Machiavellian manipulations, many continue to see her as a benevolent entity. One of our subscribers, named a Legacy Arc Games, gave us a challenge. I challenge you to go against your channel theory and sticking to your speciality of theorizing, present an argument in favor of the Oracle not being a villain. Should be an interesting test to go against the channel's favorite view just once, for the character series or otherwise. The challenge was accepted and thus we've constructed the best argument favoring the Oracle as a humanitarian. This video could very well make all our previous videos about the evil Oracle obsolete. We've made plenty of videos discussing the morality of the Oracle's actions. If morality is the understanding of what is right and what is wrong, we've determined that her actions are evil because they were for the betterment of the Matrix, not the humans. Yes, she did help establish a truce between humans and machines, but it was a truce based on a dictatorship, something that goes against freedom. But what if the Oracle has an ace up her sleeve to destroy the system? This theory goes as follows. When the Beta Matrix was created, it was unstable. At least two versions had failed, causing the loss of thousands, perhaps millions of humans who were connected to them. The Nightmare and Paradise Matrix did not work because most humans perceived the false realities. We do not know how many times the simulation has failed. We estimate that it has failed dozens or hundreds of times before the architects started to officially count the versions from the emergence of the first integral anomaly onwards, meaning that the architect has been experimenting with humans in his computer simulator for hundreds of years. Assuming that the Oracle is a program that eventually grew sympathetic towards humans, watching thousands of them die every time the architect failed and restarted the simulation made her reevaluate her stance, so she came up with a plan. The Oracle would make both parties more dependent on each other and find a way to gradually unite them. She, like the Architect, can predict human behavior, but unlike the Architect, she can understand and comprehend human emotion and irrationality. This gave the Oracle a distinct advantage. If she is a benevolent program, then the Oracle could have manipulated the Architect into adding choice to the equation, knowing full well that it will cause an anomaly. The integral anomaly, or the One, is undoubtedly the son of the Oracle. Coincidentally, for the anomaly to be controlled, it must be installed into a human. In other words, the Oracle created the solution to the instability of the equation, which resulted in the emergence of a dangerous anomaly that needs a human host, and thus creating a symbiotic relationship between machines and humans. In the first official version of the Matrix, when the first comprehensive anomaly manifested, the architect realized that the only way to keep the anomaly at bay was by creating the path of the One. A series of tasks and experiences of which the human host would have to go through so that the code that he carries within him does not go out of control and destroy the simulation. This path of the One was designed by the Oracle. How do we know that? Well, because the One has to create an emotional bond with the inhabitants of Zion. Your five predecessors were, by design based on a similar predication, a contingent affirmation that was meant to create a profound attachment to the rest of your species, facilitating the function of the One. The path of the One is an emotional journey, not a rational one, using love to manipulate the anomaly into making an important decision. As mentioned in a previous video, the Oracle created the religion of the One with prophecies, rituals, and evangelizing new believers. If her objectives to create an anomaly and the path of the One were not meant to be used against humanity, then there must be some clues to prove it. Surprisingly, there are. Humans who reject the simulation die. It was a disaster. No one would accept the program. Entire crops were lost. If the integral anomaly loses control, more people will die. 
Failure to comply with this process will result in a cataclysmic system crash, killing everyone connected to the Matrix, which coupled with the extermination of Zion will ultimately result in the extinction of the entire human race. But if the first humans who woke up from the Beta Matrix died, how can there be humans living in Zion? Zion is a necessary element in the path of the One. The city is needed to create a bond between humanity and the anomaly. So those humans who did not die from shock after escaping the first anomaly version of the Matrix were let go by the machines to build up the city of Zion. On top of everything else that resulted from the Oracle adding choice to the equation, she indirectly helped establish the first human city after the fall of humanity. Now, the architect accepted this because the stability of the Matrix rose to a 99% effectiveness. That is when the Oracle moves on to her next step of the plan, recruit a protector, because she knows that her future actions will put her in danger, possibly forcing the architect to send agents after her. And who accepted the responsibility to protect the Oracle? Seraph. Now that the Oracle has all her pieces on the board, she makes her move to break the Matrix cycle and free the humans. First, the Oracle will use Trinity to manipulate the next anomaly to fall in love with her specifically, disrupting the anomaly's predetermined affinity for humans in general. The One must fall in love with a single person, a person who is destined to die. The Oracle tells Trinity that she is destined to fall in love with the One. Then she gives Neo the hint that Trinity liked him. You're cuter than I thought. I can see why she likes you. Who? Not too bright, though. Then the Oracle sacrifices her shell so that Sati can enter the Matrix safely. The true purpose or reason are still unknown. All we do know is that Sati is important for the future. Because the child is important. I can't tell you why, but I believe that one day, the child will change both our world and your world forever. On top of that, she purposely let herself be assimilated by Smith. But if that's true, then why is she here? If she knew I was coming, why wouldn't she leave? The Oracle had disrupted the Matrix cycle to an uncontrollable state that forced Deus Ex Machina to make a deal with Neo. Neo's asking price? Peace. For the first time, Zion became a true city of humans and not a part of the Matrix cycle. The truce between humans and machines represented something much more than a ceasefire. It was a recognition of the existence of humans as individuals by machines since their imprisonment in the Matrix hundreds or thousands of years ago. Yet this was not the Oracle's ultimate goal. I'm interested in one thing, Neil, the future. And believe me, I know the only way to get there is to get there. The Oracle achieved the truce, but now she must unite both sides and achieve mutual respect between them. And this is where Sati comes in. Like Neo, love marked Sati's programming and existence. I love my daughter very much. I find her to be the most beautiful thing I have ever seen. But where we are from, that is not enough. I went to the Frenchman to save my daughter. Cookies need love like everything does. Sati was being programmed with the predication of love. If Neo's goal was to establish the truce, validate the coexistence of the real world and the simulation, then the Oracle's endgame must be to use Sati to unite both worlds. The child will change both our world and your world forever. In the end, the architect realized that it was because of the Oracle that there is a truce, and now humans must not be abused. He also acknowledges the risks she took. You played a very dangerous game. Change always is. Matrix Revolutions ended on a surprise note, a moment that validated everything up to this point. Sati made the sun rise for Neo. Just look at that. Beautiful. Did you do that? For Neo. In essence, we saw a Matrix program give a gift to a human and wish to see him again. Sati changed the Matrix out of love for Neo. Everything the Oracle did with her manipulation and deception was for the betterment of man and machine kind. And Sati is the nexus to unite both races. The Oracle isn't simply a compassionate program, but the savior of humanity and the bringer of peace. Disrupting the status quo 
and breaking the cycle. What's your purpose? To unbalance it. Why? What do you want? I want the same thing you want, Neo. And I'm willing to go as far as you are to get it. Looking at the situation objectively and rationally, it's impossible to free every human from the Matrix at once. There are not enough resources in the real world to sustain a population of millions of people. Chaos and anarchy would ensue, and the majority of the human population would die of hunger. So the most logical thing to do would be to gradually awaken those who want to be awakened and hopefully restore the surface. Though fixing the planet's surface may take centuries to accomplish, and there is no guarantee that the truce will last that long. So in the end, the Oracle might not be so bad, but... But do you agree? Was the Oracle's manipulative plan meant to save everyone? Is she benevolent and the true savior of all? Have we on this channel been wrong about her this entire time? For Matrix Explained, please leave a like and subscribe. And thank you for visiting the Desert of the Real.